What if the very thing we thought was a harmless escape is silently reshaping our desires and connections? Are you ready to uncover a hidden truth that lies beyond the screen of momentary pleasure? Welcome to Eternal Amo. Here we don't just talk about relationships, we decode the modern challenges that shape them. Today we dive into a topic hidden in whispers that's central to our time, the unseen impact of pornography on the male psyche. We're joined by Dr. Andrew Huberman, a renowned neuroscientist and the host of the Huberman Lab podcast. We're exploring how dopamine and desire intertwine, revealing the deep impact of digital indulgence on real connections. Imagine this, the digital world's instant gratification is rewiring our brains, setting unrealistic expectations in our personal relationships. Dr. Hewon explains this delicate balance between biological drives and emotional connections. But here's the truth that hits home. What if this pursuit is silently programming us, distancing us from real intimacy and connection? How does this affect our pursuit of love, relationships and self-understanding? Join us at Eternal Amo as we navigate this delicate balance seeking answers and understanding beyond the screen. It's not just about quitting a habit, it's about rediscovering what it means to connect, love and feel. There's an additional issue with pornography which is not often discussed, which is that remember guys in particular, the brain is a learning prediction machine and if I'm not trying to say that all pornography is bad, but there are good data to support the idea that if your brain learns to be aroused by watching other people have sex, it is not necessarily going to carry over to the ability to get aroused when you're one-on-one with somebody else, right? The, it, especially young kids who are consuming a lot of pornography, the brain is learning sexual arousal to other people have. You know, here I'm I'm approaching this only through the lens of biology, right? I'm not a you know, I'm not a psychologist and I'm certainly not um, political in it in any way. At least not I have ideas about politics, but I just don't discuss them publicly. But the but the idea here is that you know, I'm not saying pornography as a stimulus is bad or good. What I'm saying is it in its availability and its extreme forms, it's a very potent stimulus and very potent stimuli of any kind, extremely palatable food, extreme pornography, um, extreme experiences like bungee cord jumping, those set a threshold for dopamine release. And Anna will tell you that, and I'm sure she did, that the higher the dopamine peak, the bigger the drop afterwards. And it's not that you drop to baseline, you drop below baseline. So again, it's not, these things aren't good or bad, they just have to be controlled in a way because when people are pursuing dopamine peaks over and over and over and they aren't getting them typically it's because they've been pursuing that activity far too often and in theory all the things that we're talking about with pornography could be superimposed onto food or could be superimposed onto real sex right um that one also has to be cautious there right but the cycling back and forth between dopamine and low dopamine states dopamine fasting as it were but maybe just low dopamine states these are natural rhythms that exist in the nervous system we have to remember what the dopaminergic system is there for i'll say it again i wasn't consulted the design phase but we know as a as a generic form of motivation and pursuit you can imagine the human or the animal that's hungry or thirsty it needs energy to go pursue the thing. So the idea that you have to eat in order to get energy, that's true, but you need energy in order to get the thing to eat. So our nervous system has energy also, that's dopamine and epinephrine. Yes, we use glucose and glycogen, etc. when we're pursuing things, but the idea here is you're pursuing something and then either by smell or by sight, you think you're on the right track. So you go down that track and then ah, there it is. You know, you get some berries or you get, you know, let's get prehistoric about this or you get to kill the prey and eat it and then it gives you energy to continue this pursuit or to reproduce i mean there's a reason why humans and other animals seek out reproduction is that every every species but certainly humans have two innate desires built into them whether or not they decide to actualize this or not is the desire to protect young and make more of its own species every successful species does that even if people don't have children in general people care about children because they of what they represent very few people dislike children i mean there are a few mutants out there that dislike children but you always worry about those kinds of people